Welcome back. It is the Beyond Emissions podcast brought to you by Sologent, your clean energy solution provider right here uh, at the Sologent YouTube channel, along with our other product and promo educational videos, webinars, how to sell storage webinars, uh, educational opportunities, videos, energy storage news, all of that happening along with this show right here as well, the Beyond Emissions podcast. Uh, at the Sologent YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell in the corner so you can be a part of our ongoing uh, effort here. Uh, be a part of it. Get all of the new episodes as they come out and new learning opportunities. I, I'm telling you, uh, uh, just a myriad of resources available here uh, at the Sologent YouTube channel. If, if you want to know how to sell energy storage, you want to hear from the best experts around the world in renewable energy and clean energy, this is the place to be. So make sure you catalog this channel so that you can listen to and watch uh, all of our different learning videos and opportunities to become better. Increase your value, your knowledge. I learn every single week as the host on the program because we have experts from around the world on the show. Also, uh, you can catch the Beyond Emissions podcast at Spotify and Stitcher, uh, iTunes as well. But right here, all of it is available on demand for past episodes as well. Again, experts from around the world. Uh, in clean energy, energy storage uh, specifically is what I do. Energy storage manager here at Sologent, but we focus on total clean energy. So all of your clean energy needs, whether it's solar, PV array, uh, inverters, racking, energy storage, um, electrical balance of systems, uh, the financing. We have a, a, a part of our, our company that can help you uh, uh, obtain financing for your customers in very creative ways. Uh, load management systems, EV chargers. I mean, we have it all. When you think of clean energy, think of Sologent. Okay, so thanks for being here today again. Uh, number one uh, podcast in the clean energy business. We are the Beyond Emissions podcast brought to you by Sologent. Excited to have you back. All right, so today's guest this guy's phenomenal, man. Uh, decades of experience in the battery business. I remember working um, with this company as a competitor, uh, what, a um, little less than 20 years ago when I started in the battery business working for a very large uh, independently owned battery distributor, selling all kinds of batteries, whether it was uh, mobility batteries for uh, for wheelchairs or golf cart batteries or aerial work platform batteries, scissor lifts, um, golf cart, uh, scrubber sweeper batteries for floor cleaning machines, like everything you could imagine uh, we sold, including uh, starting batteries and deep cycle batteries, dual purpose batteries for all kinds of applications, uh, mostly lead acid based uh, in the beginning of our industry. And of course, we've transitioned to new technologies, new chemistries like lithium, iron, phosphate. We're going to talk about that today. A lot of great offerings available. Uh, originally, when I started my career, like I said, uh, these folks for me were competitors. And uh, MK Battery is the name of the company. They represent uh, one of the best manufacturers in the history of batteries, uh, East Penn, uh, DECA, I know you've heard the brand. They're everywhere. It's phenomenal. USA made uh, lead acid, uh, sealed maintenance free um, or wet flooded product. Uh, we're going to go into that and also their brand new solution for lithium iron phosphate, the DECA duration. It's exciting. But uh, what I remember early on as a competitor of mine, uh, MK Battery, was just just so far out in advance with customers. Like I had to work really, really hard because of the great service they provided, because of the op options they offered. Um, you name it, a vast library of, of opportunities for, I, I used to go up to the national parks and I'd be like, I want to sell you some batteries. Nope, we already bought ours from MK Battery and I'd go in and see the big old huge DECA Unigy uh, energy storage system that was powering this off-grid national park system and I was like, darn it, MK Battery again. There they go, winning the business. It was so hard to compete against them because they were phenomenal. And now I work here as energy storage manager at Sologent, which means 
I get to offer, not compete with, but offer MK Battery DECA East Penn USA made and other solutions available right here at Sologen. You have access to these energy storage solutions from MK Battery here at Sologen as well. I'm telling you, it's exciting. I don't have to compete with you guys anymore. I get to work with you and provide these solutions to our customers uh, at Sologent. Without further ado, uh, my friend and 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 really a mentor in the business, um, anybody who either afar or close that has worked with Bruce uh, Hayback, uh, MK Battery, Global Director, Energy Storage Business for MK Battery, is with us on the line today. If you've ever worked with them, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. We're just so pleased. It is an honor to have you here today. Bruce Hayback from MK Battery, welcome to the uh, Beyond Emissions podcast. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great this morning, Josh. Um, thanks for having me. And uh, uh, it, it's uh, a beautiful morning up here in uh, Montana. <laughs> In all the snow, I'm right here in Kalispell. It's uh, right at the head headwaters, if you will, of uh, Glacier Park. So it's beautiful up here in all the snow. I got about 14 inches of snow in my yard this morning. It's real pretty out this morning. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Uh, broad, <laughs> broadcasting live from heaven, Bruce Hayback from MK Battery. I'm God, this is so cool. Theater of the mind. It feels like we're right there with you, Bruce. That's too cool, man. Um, so I was just mentioning to the audience that in, in my original, you know, career in the battery business, I would go in and see customers and they would be buying from MK Battery, DECA, um, like the national parks with the, the DECA Unigy product. And, and I'd walk in and go, ah, MK Battery again. Darn it, when I was your competitor. And now I get to offer and my team gets to offer your amazing solutions to our customers here at Sologent. Um, you, you guys are phenomenal. MK Battery, uh, DECA, I've been in business, the battery business, leading the way in the battery business for a very long time. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself uh, to our audience and, you know, MK Battery, DECA, East Penn. I know that we should all know this already, but for those who aren't aware, you're missing out. MK Battery available here at Sologent, phenomenal solutions. Talk a little bit about that, Bruce. Well, sure. Just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the uh, renewable energy, energy storage business uh, here at MK for 23 years now. And uh, prior to that, I was in the telecom industry for about 20 years. And uh, so um, I had a lot of experience prior to coming to work here um, dealing with batteries in the outside plant world and for cable TV head ends and for uh, just the Arbok world of of telecom, just a lot of different applications that we needed batteries. And so I had worked with MK Battery and East Penn's products for years prior to coming to work here. And when I had an opportunity to hang up that hat and come over here and work on the manufacturing side, it was fun to come over to a company that I recognize as a company that um, I would feel proud to work for, that being um, – both MK Battery East Penn. And so to explain that a little bit, um, MK Battery is a wholly owned subsidiary of East Penn. Uh, East Penn acquired MK Battery in 1995. And, um, and, and so we have streamlined our products because prior to being fully owned by East Penn, we sold a few other brands as well. But now we pretty much predominantly only sell a couple now. Um, some products that East Penn doesn't make, we do import like small steel batteries because there's a large opportunity for small steel batteries in your alarm business and security business and things like that. East Penn doesn't make any products that are less than 30 amp hour, and so there's many products that are less than that. So we import them from a, 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 a battery manufacturer in Asia that we have uh, tested their products since we have a lot of labs. We can test all the different manufacturers that we want to represent and put our labels on. East Penn is the single largest site in the United States, second largest battery company in the United States, 
one of the oldest. We've been around since 1946, incorporated in 47. It is a privately owned company, about $3 billion in revenue. And I guess what I really like about this family-owned business is that we have built our reputation on building quality products and offering cus good customer service. And that's why I wanted to go to work for them, as I had found that out personally myself working with this company, how good their products were. But I just enjoyed working with them because I almost always would get a live body on the phone. I didn't always get a recording. And if I did get a recording, I got... I got a response from somebody very quickly. And so if you look at the real big picture is the sustainability part that comes from that in that you're working with a company that's been around since 1946. We're here for the long run. We stand behind our products. We have products that we stock locally in many different warehouses throughout the United States. Often we can deliver products off our own trucks. And if not, we can offer the best freight rates because we work with numerous freight companies that are regionally uh, found in each of the different areas around the United States. But we also have, um, as MK Battery, we have uh, about a dozen uh, international warehouses as well. So if a customer here finds opportunities elsewhere in Europe or in the Middle East or in Australia even, uh, and we have partners in Africa, all across Africa as well. But we can we can uh, assist people finding product that's stocked uh, in a lot of different places. So again, the sustainability part of working with East Penn MK Battery, I think, um, lends a lot of credibility to us. And it's been a pleasure in my career that's gone by very fast working here, selling quality products, and offering good customer service. Bruce Hayback, Global Director, Energy Storage Business for MK Battery, uh, DECA East Penn, available here at Sologen. Thanks for being here with us today, Bruce. Uh, listeners, thanks so much for tuning in. A wonderful conversation, background, and one of the top uh, USA made uh, energy storage solutions available right here in America at Sologent. Click on the link below to find out more. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about different chemistries available today uh, from MK Battery through Sologent. A um, little bit about lead acid. I know that lead acid, you know, is off the conversation list for a lot of folks, but there are a ton of applications where lead acid still makes sense. Uh, not just for upfront cost, but for other reasons as well. We'll go into that. Um, also, in addition, sustainability. If you're thinking about the environment, um, a little bit about lead acid batteries, the history of lead acid batteries. I know Bruce knows a lot about that. So excited to have you here today to pick your brain. Bruce Hayback uh, from MK Battery with us here today. Excited about that. Uh, lead acid batteries, most recycled product on planet Earth. So we're going to go into some of that here shortly. Talk about... Uh, the brand new solution available, lithium iron phosphate solution for low voltage, high voltage called the DECA duration battery. That's right. Brand new technology available here at Sologent. We'll talk about that today uh, as well. Bruce, before we get started on all of that, though, I want to touch on something that I noticed and I've you've been seeing it in the news with all the layoffs in the solar industry. And really, energy storage batteries are actually not just an add-on or the cherry on top, but really now the centerpiece uh, for for solar customers or, or, heck, clean energy customers. Because standalone storage without solar can be even applicable uh, for a lot of folks and, and what they need to accomplish for their energy needs, too. So, I mean, it really can't even narrow it down to just solar. But all the layoffs and everything happening right now in our industry, the jobs being shedded. I feel so bad for these families and the businesses. And we've given them a lifeline. And it's energy storage. It's no longer an add-on. But you've got to invest and learn uh, and we offer you lots of ways to learn, resources available. Go to mkbattery.com and click on resources for resources available. But you can also reach out for one-on-one -on -one training with the MK Battery engineer team anytime for you and your team to learn how to properly sell energy storage, the value proposition to your customers, and how energy storage can help you not just you know survive, but thrive, actually 
not just save your business, but the entire industry. It's all about energy storage. I'm not a psychopath, Bruce. I truly believe it. And opening up our minds to new applications for business owners outside, taking off the solar only blinders, right, Bruce? Talk a little bit about this because I'm looking at the different markets that you can uh, offer solutions through Solagent from MK Battery to our customers to help them win business, maybe outside of the box stuff they normally wouldn't think about if they're normally just resi solar, like energy storage for solar and standalone, or UPS, uninterruptible power supply, high rate, DECA Telecom, you talked about coming from the telecom business. There are literally buildings with billions of dollars of batteries that need to re be replaced every so many years, even though they're still good, like clockwork. It's like a money printing machine if you know how to go get that business. Uh, warning, mass, mass notification systems, traffic, uh, elevator backup. There are so many different things, broadband and CATV. I mean, my goodness gracious. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for business to, businesses to use energy storage to not just survive and avoid layoffs, but to actually thrive right now. Do you agree? I, I, what are your thoughts on what I just said, Bruce, on these opportunities? No, that, that, that's correct, Josh. I mean, what's interesting and why I think renewable energy is such a, to me, intriguing and, and fun industry to uh, be a part of is that it's a never-ending, uh, changing uh, industry, both in technology as well as opportunities. There's so many new applications. I think when people think about solar when it first started out, um, I mean, the very first solar system started out in the 1940s, and most of them were in Northern California. And truthfully, the hippies, it's just so-called hippies, had a lot to do with that because they needed a source for power uh, to do different things for their crops that were hidden in the hills of uh, Northern California. And so, uh, anyhow, solar got, that's where solar really originally started, and it's really developed into so many applications now. In fact, I have a page that's full of, of listings of all the different opportunities that continue to grow, and both for off-grid as well as grid-tied applications for batteries. And then when you just look at the batteries themselves, and you touched on this, Josh, is that there is so many different types of, of batteries for energy storage, whether it is a non-cyclic application or if it's cyclic or if it's one in between or if it's for high temperature or if it's for more of a starting application. Um, the, the batteries are built differently. Not one battery is suited for all. Many people think, well, I'll just go down and run down to the, Napa store and buy an automotive battery and I'll make it work. And yes, it's true. Most of the time you can make a solution or an application, I should say, will work with a given type of battery, but it's certainly not an optimized one and it probably won't work very long if you chose, uh, an, say for instance, a starting battery and you wanted to use it in a cyclic application. They don't have the right type of chemistry. They don't have the right type of plate and the battery's going to break down quickly, and you're not going to be happy. And typically, if you put the wrong battery into your energy storage application, it's going to do injustice for several things. It's going to give the person that, that has this problem is going to start talking out loud about it, and uh, word of mouth is bad, but they'll bad mouth the battery. They'll bad mouth whoever they bought it from, and they'll say, well, you know, the deck of battery, I, I got this deck of battery from Napa, and it didn't work right. And, and then you'll say, well, Napa sold it, so Napa doesn't know what they're doing. Well, and then it's the, it's the industry itself. Don't even use solar. Don't, don't work with so entered batteries in your solar application because solar doesn't work. And, it's, again, it's, it's just people that are uneducated don't know what they're doing. And if you buy products from a source like Napa for a solar system, you really did your injustice. You should go to a company like Solagen where you can get all of those information and get steered in the right direction because there is so many different types of batteries. Again, you can go to a, a, a store and look at flooded batteries. You can look at AGM batteries. You can, talk, you can get gel batteries. These are just on the lead acid side. But, again, you've got to understand, there are 5-year, 10-year, and 20-year type design batteries. So if somebody just calls up and said they need a battery, 
we go into, as, so, as well as the Sologent, we're going to ask you a list of questions. We want to make sure that we understand the application and, and understand the customer's needs as well. Do they want a battery that they want to understand? If they want a, the, the lower cost solution, okay, do they understand that they're going to have to perform maintenance on that battery? Oh, they do? They, they, they don't want to do maintenance? They don't want to add water every single month and, and have to use a flashlight and specific gravity checker to check that? Well, then you ought to look at a valve-regulated type battery that you don't have to more of a maintenance-free type battery. How long do they want the battery to last? Do they want it to last, say, five years, 10 years, 20 years? Well, a 10-year battery or a 20-year battery certainly is going to have a different cost than a five-year. So you're going to be looking at different product lines. Again, we offer a full portfolio, all available through Solizen, that you guys will get steered to the right battery for the application. Don't just buy a battery that fits all. And now with the opportunity to look at, you know, different chemistries, and, the, and as Josh said earlier, the lithium iron phosphate is the, one of the most safest and best products that's being offered. We're proud of our new product that we offer as well. So, again, a lot of different products, a lot of different footprints, you know, we sell batteries from, you know, a one amp hour batteries to 3,000 amp hour batteries. And then you can put them in, uh, you know, two volt cells to multiple voltage. You can go up to a thousand volts now, even on the lead acid side. There's so many different things you can do. So again, get with the experts though. Don't just try to go to an, a battery store or a battery whole house or supplier, go to a company that offers uh, the, the engineering and technical support that can assist you. Companies like Solagen are great partners for us to have, and we're very proud to have, have really um, been highlighted and showcased and partnered with them to talk about the different products and offerings that we have here at MK Battery East Penn. Well said, Bruce Hayback. Uh, MK Battery, um, we are here to offer you energy storage solutions. And, you know, don't just think of solar for your residential when you're thinking of batteries or energy storage because we're partnered with MK Battery here uh, at Solagent. We have access to their entire catalog. So I'm serious. You might have a you might have a customer, you're an electrical contractor, you're, you're looking to sell them solar. And then while you're there, you realize that the customer has a hundred locations. And in all of those locations, they have uh, an alarm security system. And for all of those alarm security systems, they all come with a 12 volt, eight amp seal, uh, sealed valve regulated lead acid battery. Oh my goodness. You know what, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, customer that, that owns this business with hundreds of locations with all these security systems, I know I'm just quoting you on the solar right now, but can I also give you a quote on the 100, 12 volt, 8 amp, 8 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries that you need too for your, for your alarm and security system? Oh, I can. Thank you so much. And then talk to us here at Solagent. We'll get a, a killer, great quote for you uh, from MK Battery and, and you guys will ship it direct for us. I mean, there are business opportunities outside of the residential solar and MK Battery and Solagent are here to help you expand your business. I mean, imagine you have a customer and, and just in the conversation and questions and you're talking about sizing a solar system for them and come to find out they go through thousands of AA batteries a month for whatever, walkie talkies or whatever. Have your eyes and your ears open for these additional opportunities. We've got Duracell ProCell alkaline batteries through MK Battery, and we can sell you those in bulk. I mean, the business opportunities are everywhere. Don't close your mind to just solar residential only. Be open to all these opportunities that MK Battery can can help you with through us here at Solagent. Okay, so... You talked about chemistries and you teased a little bit uh, upcoming. We'll talk about the new DECA duration lithium iron phosphate battery from MK Battery. I'm excited about that. Uh, Bruce Hayback here with us here today from MK Battery. And uh, Bruce, again, uh, lots of experience. So we're very blessed to have you here. Global Director, Energy Storage Business for MK. And yeah, just so excited. Decades of experience. We get to uh, pick your brain a little bit today. Okay, so let's talk about chemistries. 
You mentioned lead acid, uh, MK battery, East Penn, DECA, um, really world renowned uh, for lead acid battery manufacturing. And, you know, people hear the word lead. I remember I was at BCI, Battery Council International, um, and they were talking about rebranding because people hear the word lead as lead acid and they it it gives them a negative connotation just the word i guess but in all reality that we need to flip that back because we need to be proud of it lead acid batteries are the most recycled products on planet earth what was the number bruce it's like 97 98 99 percent or something of all parts in a lead acid battery get recycled into a new battery. I, it's the most recycled product on planet Earth, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. I mean, and, and we're really proud of, uh, it's 99% is the, is the figure, and we're really proud of that fact. We're the only battery manufacturer in the United States that has a smelter on site. And we have two patents on recycling the, the acid itself. Nobody else is doing the acid part of it. So, I mean, I'm, we're really proud. That's why it's just an amazing thing that we can assist a customer uh, by getting rid of your spent batteries or your cores, picking them up, offering you um, a credit or cash solution for those, and help cleaning up and keeping things green. And again, that is correct, Josh. 99% of that battery is actually recycled. It's incredible. Most all the other products after one recycle require X amount of virgin percent to be added to them to be able to recycle them. And that is not true with lead. You, as, as I've heard you say many times, I mean, you could take this uh, old retired batteries and uh, turn them into brand new batteries. So it's, it's really a, a, a nice thing for, the, for, for our environment here, that's for sure. It's something to be proud of, absolutely. Um, and, and you mentioned the smelter uh, that you have at East Penn. Uh, I remember being at another battery distributor and we we had to pick up and, and dispose of all of the, the cores of all of the old spent lead acid batteries and turn them in and send them to a smelter. smelter. And when we did, oftentimes I would see on the bill of lading that it was headed to East Penn. So you don't just recycle batteries from your own customers. You, you actually recycle lead from batteries and the parts from batteries like like for the industry as well. I mean, it, it's world-renowned, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we'll take lead-acid batteries as long as it's, a, it's an actual lead-acid and not some of the older-type batteries. For instance, some of the telecom batteries from uh, Absolite that had cadmium in them, you cannot... Uh, put those into a smelter, you'll have a big explosion. But as a rule, yeah, just about, and most of those have been now cycled out, but we used to have to ask for sure. But as it is, we have x-ray machines now on our on our uh, smelter belts as the batteries are going up to the crushers. And just so you know, just to take a, a, a stab at how many, or uh, give you a fact then about how many batteries are being recycled at our facility, for instance. But we recycle approximately... 35 to 40,000 batteries every single day, car-sized batteries. That's a staggering amount of batteries, and that's only about 20% of our lead consumption. So we, uh, excuse me, of our, uh, well, yeah, lead consumption. So we have to purchase still about 80% outside of that. And so we buy lead from all over the world and bring it in, but, we're proud of the fact that we can recycle it. And here's a really interesting note, and I'm really kind of glad we're talking about just what, what, what benefits do we have of having a smelter at our factory? Because I told you we have one right at our site. Well, here's what's going on. At East Penn, we have 250 QC points along the way from raw materials to finished goods going out the door. At any point, we can reject whatever it is, whether it's a, 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 a part, uh, a, a metal, a plastic, uh, a plate, but during the assembly line and the manufacturing process, anything that would cause something to be rejected, we can do so, and it goes across the street to the smelter, and at no cost other than the cost of obviously having to uh, lose that product out of the line, but it's a uh, we 
can keep our specs very, very tight, and, and we're very proud of that fact that we can have such tight specs and tolerances so that you get a repeatable product, and we can just reject it if it doesn't meet our specs and it goes across the streets and gets smelted. Whereas our competitors, I can tell you, it costs a lot of money to ship batteries across the states to a smelter somewhere. And actually, a lot of the smelters are, are being shut down in the states because they don't meet EPA standards. And we're very proud of the fact that EPA writes their standards based on our smelter here in the U.S. because we're so far below the actual standards. And we're very proud of that fact. EPA is standards are higher than ours. And they have to... So, a lot of the U.S. ones got shut down, and they've opened up some new ones in Canada and Mexico. There is a couple, uh, one new one that I am aware of in the Midwest that's been opened up, but most of the ones in California have all been shut down now because of EPA has shut them down because of their poor performance. But we're really proud of the fact that we can keep our tolerances tight. If you don't, if it costs you a lot of money to reject a battery. What our competitors have done is they've had to open up or widen up their specs a little more to get the products to go through on the assembly line. So it don't cost them so much to ship a battery to have it recycled. So we're uh, we're really proud of the fact that we feel we're doing things the right way. And uh, and anyhow, that's just a little bit more about the smelter and that process. Of, and we think that it really gives us a, an East Penn benefit um, by, by being able to keep our tolerances and our specs closed, and that's why we probably have the mar leading market share, especially when you think about batteries that are put in in um, multiple strings or in series, where you have multiple batteries, where you have battery banks, because if you have one battery that fails, then you're going to have a whole bank that fails, and that costs a lot of money. If you just have, a, for instance, in a car, one battery fails, okay, that car didn't start, and maybe that's not so bad. But in, when you're talking about the telecom world and UPS applications, talk about renewable energy, energy storage applications. You have banks of batteries now. You can't afford to have your battery bank go down, not when you're supplying uh, data centers and, and uh, Lifeline, 911 services. All these things require big banks of batteries. You can't afford to have them go down. And at East Penn MK Battery, with the, with just the fact that our 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 products our 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 mean time between failure our MTBS is so good we we get a lot of business many battery companies can't get their foot in the door because they just have too many problems and so a lot of them in the U.S. with lead are just focusing on car batteries more and getting out of the applications that are a lot more uh, dependent upon having banks of batteries and having quality products. So again, I kind of got long winded here, but just want to give you a little update. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. And, and another thing too, I want to bring up when it comes to the, uh, whether it's sealed maintenance free batteries or wet flooded batteries, uh, on the lead acid side, uh, that MK battery makes available made by East Penn made in the USA DECA product, uh, right here at Sologent. When it comes to the freshness of the product made right here and shipped to you, it makes a big difference. A lot of companies in the lead acid world, and you can speak to this, Bruce, we see it all the time. <clears throat> they have a battery that is made in Vietnam or China or Korea or whatever. How many months is that battery sitting on a ship to get over here before it's actually put on a truck, sent to a warehouse, put on a shelf at a distributor, shipped to the customer, and installed? Sometimes a fresh brand new battery from one of those suppliers might have a date code that shows it being fresh right then. But there might be a whole year before it actually got into the application and sulfated sitting on the shelf somewhere. That is a reality that does not does not occur with MK Batteries uh, East Penn Decker product available at Sologent because you're so fresh. You're not sitting on a boat in someone's warehouse for a whole year sulfating. That's why I think when I used to compete against you guys, I would go in and I would see the MK Battery, the East Penn product 
would generally have a date code sticker that would be about a year older than everything else on the core pile. And I would always assume that that was why. Uh, is the freshness of your product versus the competitors that bring in their product overseas that are sitting on a ship sulfating or in a warehouse sulfating for a year before it reaches the application? That's a big difference, right? Absolutely. And I mean, especially if you're talking about uh, flooded batteries, which are still globally probably 60 or 70 percent of the market share because of the cost. They are a lower cost solution. And if you maintain them and do a good job of maintaining them, they can be the best uh, battery out there as far as long life if you buy a quality battery and you service it. The problem is, is that flooded batteries have the fastest self-discharge rate. So in other words, once that battery comes off the line and has been boost charged and shipped to the stores or the warehouses or wherever they're going, in a flooded battery has about a 30-day shelf life before it should be boost charged again. 30 days. So if it came from offshore and you're getting products that were made somewhere else, by the time it gets off the boat, it already needs to be charged. Now, you as a consumer, if you're just looking at with a voltmeter, you may not be able to tell that because voltage does not tell you everything about a battery, and that's a real misnomer, and we could go on. That's a whole other topic that we could spend a lot of time on talking about is testing batteries. But again, uh, flooded batteries, very quick self-discharge. And, and lower cost solutions, uh, even uh, AGM and gel coming on a boat, they can be on boats depending upon where they're coming from, which locations, they can be on a boat for two to three months. And already any battery just about coming offshore is good, should be boost charged again. And believe me, once you get to the state and you put them in warehouses and warehouses are hot and that does a lot of problems to batteries too and and uh, but they're just it costs a lot of money to boost charge batteries. You got to take every single battery out of the pallet, put them on a line, charge them for X amount of hours, depending upon and and truthfully, how good are they really doing on a boost charge? Are they really putting it all the way up and and getting ready? They're the not doing it at all, Bruce. That's what I remember. God love the people in our industry that are just regular battery distributors that are bringing in batteries on a boat from somewhere. They're putting it in on their shelf. They're putting a brand new date code on it, and they're selling it whenever they sell it, and they're boost charging it maybe three to six months later at that point. It, it, but they should do it right off the boat because of the situation. That's why the MK battery always seem from DECA, always seem to last about a year longer than all of the other batteries I would see on the core pile. That makes total sense. That's that's what I thought. I was like, that's there's got to be a reason besides the fact that it's, you know, superior quality and all of that. But, but there's an actual self-discharge uh, issue that happens with these batteries that come from overseas, but you've got it right here in America. It's fresh, not off the boat, but out of the warehouse, out of the factory, right into your application. What a big difference because that, that, that makes for a longer life battery, more longevity, more efficiency, a better situation. You mentioned something a moment ago, Bruce Hayback with us, by the way, MK battery, East Penn DECA available here at Soligent, Bruce Hayback, global director energy storage business, uh, East Penn products, again, available here at Soligent. You mentioned wet flooded uh, versus AGM. You're absolutely correct. Most people believe that AGM gets a longer life, but you're, you're correct. If properly charged, watered, maintained, um, wet flooded batteries can actually get more life cycles than an AGM or valve regulated lead acid gel or AGM product. Uh, uh, you, that's a that's a misnomer that most people have. Uh, maintenance, proper charging, that really is the key to any battery having success, right? Besides properly sizing it up front. Yeah, that's correct, Josh. And but the biggest problem is, as we all know, in the energy storage applications, is that the batteries are not getting, as a rule, typically fully charged. And so the batteries are in a partial state of charge, and that kind of leads us into why the new chemistries are so popular now is because they are what we call a, 
a true partial state of charge battery. That's what these lithium iron phosphate batteries do is they are a, a partial state of charge battery. And unfortunately, lead acid batteries are great, but you've got to get them fully charged and get all the sulfate taken back off the plate. I mean, sulfation is a natural process. That's what's going to happen. When you discharge a battery, the sulfates build up on the plate. That's normal. That's what's supposed to happen. But when you, when you discharge that battery, the specific gravity changes. It gets closer to water, and you need to then get that battery recharged because when a battery is discharged, that, that closer to water state of a specific gravity, that's what happens to plates and why it, they're so vulnerable in a discharged state is that, believe it or not, those lead plates are soluble in water. They start to dissolve. We call it plate shedding. So the quicker you can get those batteries fully recharged and get the specific gravity corrected and get all the sulfates back into the acid and get it corrected back up to whatever that battery manufacturer and that type of battery recommends as a correct, fully charged, specific gravity, that's what you want to do. And it just doesn't happen very often. It, you know, but it, it needs to happen more than not. If it doesn't, the batteries will sulfate to a point where the sulfates get so hard they'll quit accepting electricity and you'll start to notice a performance difference and the batteries won't last as long and you'll start to see that happen What no matter what the type of application is. And eventually then it will quit accepting a charge at all and the batteries fail. So again, these partial state of new of charged batteries, the new technologies are really, everybody probably remembers, we all went to NICAD batteries for a while, but they had a lot of different issues. A lot of them have been corrected, but memory was one of them. But now lithium is really the, the choice of them because they are a true partial state of charge. And if they have a very good BMS in it, a battery management system and monitoring system, I call them a BMMS actually because they do both management and monitoring, but the BMS that manages the, the charging, it, it, it is monitoring the voltage and the current and managing it so that it gets that battery periodically completely fully charged and it, it takes it to the point that it doesn't get overcharged and it also doesn't allow it to over discharge. It'll stop all loads from over discharging the battery. That's why it's called a battery management system. And that's what you really need. And that's been the true problem of many lead acid systems is that they don't have a BMS. We've been trying for years and now there's a few competitors and uh, happy to talk about that sometime, but that actually have uh, not competitors so much, but as uh, there are a few companies that we've worked with to develop some battery, some BMSs for lead acid, some low cost solutions so that you can help those batteries that are in this partial state of charge try to get recovered so that you can see what's happening in the field. Most of your batteries are failing because of poorly charged systems. And again, though, it is a, it is in reality with the sun, if you're depending upon the sun, these off grid systems, uh, you really need a, a good uh, uh, BMS and a good battery to be in those situations so that you can be managing that partial state of charge that your batteries are in. Yeah, and when, when sizing your PV array, folks, for lead acid, you have to oversize. When I went to Outback Power uh, class, um, Roy Nungan was our professor uh, at the class, along with some many right. experts in there. And they made sure to let us know that you will be in a partial state of charge environment if your customer has an off-grid system using lead acid batteries and you're just taking the energy needed for your consumption and designing divide by five hours of peak sun. Here's your PV array. It will be too small. You have to over size your PV array or your charge source to account for the inefficiencies of the lead acid, the inefficiency of the inverter, the inefficiency of the charge controller, the electrical loss period, and it equals out to about a 40 to 60% oversize of your PV array above and beyond. So if your energy need is 10 kilowatt hours, then you need to oversize that by about 40 to 60% larger than that of your PV array in order to produce enough to not be in a 
a partial state of charge environment situation for your batteries if they're lead acid, which is why it's a big advantage, even though it might be a little more upfront for the lithium iron phosphate. In the long run, you can save money on your overall system because of its efficiencies and ability to charge so fast. You can talk about this. Bruce Hayback with us again, by the way, Global Director, Energy Storage Business, MK Battery, DECA, East Penn with us on the Beyond Emissions podcast. You can get away with a smaller PV array, not oversized so much, by getting away with a little bit smaller of a PV array, still being able to charge up the lithium iron phosphate that can accept it so much faster, you can actually save money on the PV array side, even though the lithium costs a little bit more than the lead acid versus the lead acid that costs a little less up front, but you've got to oversize and spend more on your PV array, right? Like at the end of the day, you can end up really dialing in your system to exactly where you need to be to accomplish your goals. Um, MK battery, DECA duration, DD5300, safe long life lithium iron phosphate solutions right now at Soligent. We're talking about lithium now and the amazing solutions from MK battery. Bruce Hayback, thanks again for being on the show. This DECA duration product is amazing, not just for residential, but commercial as well. Talk to our listeners about that. Yeah, um, what's, what's really, I guess, been uh, interesting on, on um, the development of this product is that uh, in working with um, uh, the Italian manufacturer of this product, um, we, East Penn owns a, a lithium company um, that isn't able to uh, uh, produce enough uh, outside resources to go into the energy storage markets. They're tied up pretty much with the motive power industry and the government. They do a ton of R&D for the government. So anyhow, but what we did have was a lab, and it took us three years to vet a product uh, that we would put our name on. So we this is not manufactured uh, by us, but we tested this product for three years. We know the specs on it are are accurate and conservative at best. There are so many companies, not just in the lithium world, but in all batteries, uh, that, that are just putting, uh, printing, unfortunately, specs that, that they know that you want to see in here. And there's and you, most consumers don't have the ability to test and know what you're getting. That's why we think that it means a lot to buy from a reliable source such as Soligen or and buying the manufacturer of a DECA brand name that you can trust because it's been around since 1946. Our sustainability talk is there, but this product is very unique. It is it is a product that can uh, mount three different ways. It can mount on the wall. And it can mount by stacking itself like a pancake, or you can stand it up on its end like books and put it on a bookshelf type scenario, depending upon your particular needs or applications, you can do a lot of different things. If you need, we did develop a uh, seismic uh, racking system for it. If it is in many states, that is what is mandatory. Uh, so you need to do that. We have a base uh, that gives you also some uh, flexibility in getting it up off the floor. If you're going to go with the stack uh, method, which we, think is one of the best ways to go. It just offers you a really nice, clean, easy to uh, uh, do uh, your your voltage checks at times if you want to do. Everybody should do maintenance checks at times just to see what's going on. But you can get access to all of your cabling and everything, but it allows you some routing of cables. It allows you your radius bends on the bottom module to be able to be more flexible with that and then get tied into racking systems of some sort where the cabling is being routed. But again, this product is very unique in that you can, uh, uh, since it is a low voltage or high voltage, uh, you can put these units in the 15 of them in parallel in the low voltage 48 volt application, and then you can put up to seven clusters or seven strings in parallel and go up to 550 kilowatt hours of storage. Um, I don't think that most people ought to be looking at unless they really need to low voltage and that high capacity because you're going to be using uh, copper cables that are as thick as your 
uh, wrist. <laughs> and that could be expensive, right? Very expensive now. The copper? And it's really high current. And current, you know, is what kills you. So it, the voltage is, is, is a better way to go with high voltage if you're going to go with uh, a lot of capacity. And you can go up to 16 of these in series, uh, up to 1,000 volts, and then up to nine strings in parallel and go up to 763 kilowatt hours of storage. So you have the ability to put a lot of storage behind these products. And again, you have a superior uh, proprietary BMS that you can monitor all this remotely. And it's really nice to be able to see what is going on to everything in your system down to events, to temperature this there, to right down to the each of the individual cell voltages that are inside of each battery module. There's just a lot of flexibility and visibility that you can see what's going on with these products. Um, again, it racks itself, uh, and it can and and uh, that saves you money from not having to buy a rack. So it's just a really unique design that we feel is beneficial in many different ways for, and we stock it right here in the U.S. And uh, Sologic has uh, stock on this product. And again, uh, we could direct you and help you uh, look at your actual system design. And as Josh said, when comparing it to lead acid, you can utilize a smaller battery bank uh, to do the job because you can use more of the battery bank. You right. have to remember, talking about lead acid, the maximum depth of discharge that we would ever recommend was 50%. And that is only if you have a gen set. If you don't have a gen set, the max that we would say in an off-grid application is about 20 to 25% is the max depth of discharge. And you've got to realize that, that uh, you know, because you have limited sun hours and you don't want to have your generator running all the time, that it takes a long time to charge these batteries. When you go to LFP, these lithium iron phosphate batteries, and, and I can talk more about the chemistry because we have nanographene added to ours, Ooh. and that another great additive to our product that gives some unique extra benefits. And those benefits are, again, a faster recharging product. That's one of the key things is that you can recharge this battery. You can use up to 90% of its capacity. It's rated, all the tests and specs are done at 100% depth of discharge. But for all of your warranty purposes, no third-party company that writes warranties and everybody, every manufacturer has to get a third party to write your warranty for you, but nobody will do it at a hundred percent. So you're going to do it at 90%. It's rated for that easily. That's why I say our specs are conservative, but you're going to be able to use the bulk of that capacity. So look how much more capacity you're using of this battery. And if you have the ability to recharge it, like Josh said earlier, oversize your battery, uh, or excuse me, your, your solar array so that you can recharge quickly. Yes, you don't need as big of a solar array, but if you do have one, and I still think solar is the cheapest part of it, go ahead and oversize it. You can recharge it quickly. You, if you need to cycle it a couple times a day even, you can do that. So I'm not saying that's the best method, but it certainly won't hurt the battery at all. And you got to realize that over 7,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge equates to more than 19 years. So it's a great product that lasts a long time. That's right. That's right, folks. And figuring out, okay, and let's talk about that with the, with the, the listeners. Um, how do we figure out, how do we size? And it's really simple, folks. If you want to size a battery bank at a depth of discharge you desire. So... Let's say it's lead acid and you want to, well, real quick, uh, lead acid approximately, you don't, well, you probably know off the top of your head, Bruce Hayback with us from MK Battery, Beyond Emissions Podcast, Solagent YouTube channel, like and subscribe. So uh, how many, uh, real, real quick, how many um, uh, estimated life cycles at 50% DOD for your lead acid? About how many life cycles roughly? I'm guessing, what, about 1,200, 1,500-ish or so? What? Upon if it's a five-year type product or year type product, yeah. It's, it's 1, to okay, so 1,500, if you're at 50% DOD, 1,500 divided by 365, 4.10 years of life expectancy. Now, at 25% depth of discharge, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, how many cycles? 25% uh, DOD on a lead acid, roughly? I'm guessing around 
4,000, 3,000? Yeah, on a right? What what's that? Yeah, on a flooded battery that on a valve break probably around 20 about about 35 about I'm forgive me it cut out there. About 30 Sorry. Uh, yeah, 3,000. About 3,000. Okay, so 3,000 cycles at 25% depth of discharge divided by 365, 8.21 years of life. Now, 7,000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge for the lithium deca duration, DD5300 available here at Soligent, 7,000 divided by 365, 19.17 years of life. Big difference. Now, Let's talk about this with them, Bruce. A lot of customers hear this depth of discharge and they're assuming that, oh, we're going to rely on the inverter to control that, which you can, like with a Solark and other inverters, it does have that functionality. But really, at the end of the day, it's really simple. Folks, listen to this. Write this down if you want to figure out what depth, what size your battery bank needs to be at. Let's say I want to be at 80% DOD for this DECA duration battery, 80% depth of discharge. How do I get there? How do I know? Well, if you need 10 kilowatt hours of usable energy in a day, that's what you need to know. What is my usable energy? How many kilowatt hours? Okay, divide that number by point, whatever the DOD depth of discharge is you desire. So 10 kilowatt hours divided by what? If I want 80, I want divided by 0.8. It increases it by 20%. I need 12.5 kilowatt hours of battery. So that battery should not discharge past 80% depth of discharge. You, you size it up front folks. So let's say I have a lead acid and we want to go with Bruce's uh, recommendation, which is correct for lead acid, no deeper than 25% depth of discharge, you're going to oversize it by 70%. So how do we do that? Let's say we've got 10 kilowatt hours of usable energy needed uh, for, for the customer. So we take that usable energy number 10 divided by 0.25. That's the depth of discharge divide, uh, desired. It oversizes it by 75%. Now we need 40 kilowatt hours of total storage. So that battery should not discharge past 25% DOD. But that's how you can use the calculator to very quickly properly size your battery with the DOD built in up front, as opposed to just hoping and wishing and praying that it all works out. Um, th th that's correct, right, Bruce? That is correct. And again, have the, the warranty different too. Those lead acid battery warranties typically are anywhere from one year to seven years prorated, and you know, and you're getting a full ten year warranty on on your uh, on your lithium batteries now. So there's a big difference on what you're looking at. And you have the control, um, and you're not alone. Uh, Bruce Hayback, uh, you, we're, we're here for them, right? I mean, upfront training, uh, project by project, helping with design. You and your team, uh, uh, Elias and, and Glaucy, and you and your entire team, Bruce, your engineering support team. Basically, our customers at Soligent, we have access, they have access to all of that those resources, huh? That is correct. And one thing is so nice with the BMS through Wi-Fi, we can connect to the customer site and help them and assist them with anything that's going on from commissioning to troubleshooting. If there is a problem, we have so few of problems, but if there is something, uh, Lord knows you could have uh, somebody walk into a building and smash it one of your products with something else with a forklift or something who knows but anyhow it, we can help you by troubleshooting and we can see it because of the monitoring system that's in it we can tell you what's going on with it you might need a firmware update or something like that so all those things can be done and the the team is available uh, and, and somebody will get back to you uh, typically no matter every single day of the week if you did get a recording you don't get a live body you'll still get a you'll still get a response that day um, we feel very very good that you're going to get uh, what we feel is exceptional uh, technical support and or customer services Josh said and again it's just a phone call away and and we're happy to assist 
get training customized for you and your team as well, one-on-one. We can schedule a Zoom class. It's free resource, folks. Take advantage of it. Email me, storage at solagent.net, and I will connect you with the DECA East Penn MK Battery team, and we will provide an education for you, your customers, whatever it takes. Your level of support with us at Solagent and partners like MK Battery, you're not going to get this anywhere else. We provide one-on-one classes, one-on-one educational opportunities uh, for you to learn. And if you just want to listen to something while you've got some windshield time, drive into a job site, go to the Solagent YouTube channel where we have some great videos on there uh, talking about the new Decker Duration battery in addition to some of the lead acid technology. Bruce Hayback, uh, Global Director Energy Storage Business for MK Battery, Decca East Penn, made in the USA. Also their brand new Italian made uh, lithium iron phosphate system that can be dual voltage for residential or high voltage solutions as well. Don't forget, um, I want to mention this, but I can't believe we're almost at the end of the show, man. Time flies, Bruce. You got to come back and do an off-grid special with this. Uh, I want to have you come back, talk about telecom. I'm going to have you back probably 10 times, so I hope you don't mind. We got a lot to talk about. Um, But one of the things I wanted to mention is be looking for new opportunities, folks. When you're when you're talking to a customer, don't just be thinking solar and batteries. That's it. Solar, solar, solar. You're just your business is going to go down the tubes like everyone else laying people off if that's your philosophy. Energy storage is the salvation, not just for your business, but for this industry. And you need to embrace it today if you want to be successful. We're here to help you. You're not alone. So be looking for these outside of the box opportunities that you're normally not looking for. As you walk in, oh my God, you've got a little battery system for your gen set in the hospital. Oh my God, you got a battery system, uh, UPS backing up uh, mission critical elevators in a, in a building. Oh my gosh, you have you know XYZ data center and you've got you know 50 batteries in there backing that up we work with mk battery we can help you with all those you oh my gosh you're the owner of a solar company and you're buying batteries from us for your customers and you also love to go camping with your trailer oh my gosh or you have a boat or your or your grandma has a a a little you know a mobility electric wheelchair or something you know don't Pass up on all these opportunities. You can get that wheelchair battery from us through MK Battery here at Solagen. You can get that RV battery. You can get that telecom battery. We have these available. Uh, In closing, really opening up our minds to to all of the different energy storage opportunities that exist out there beyond just solar. Um, Talk a little bit about that as we close. Really opening our minds and selling batteries not having our solar blinders on. Uh, Speak to that if you don't mind. I really appreciate your experience and sharing uh, all of your knowledge here with us today, Bruce. Yeah, sure. Happy to do that. I mean, uh, as I I said, you know, back in the day when solar really started out, it was just a very simple, people needed some, they needed power for for off-grid applications for whatever that particular thing was. And they just would throw up a, couple of solar panels and a, and a simple battery and do things. But right now, I mean, there's so many different opportunities. And truthfully, what I tell people is, and I'll, I'll talk about some of these here, but just remember this, that, you know, if I, if I listed 50 different applications, don't, don't try to be an expert in all 50 of these applications. I tell people, find the ones, be, be open, as Josh said, to finding new areas, not just residential, for instance, but find new areas, but become an expert at whatever area that you choose to, uh, to uh, go after and, and, and do business in. For instance, in the oil and gas industry, that's still one of our biggest markets, believe it or not. And I, so, I mean, the, in, in, in the oil and gas industry, besides just needing power remotely, but they use it for telemetry cathodic protection and cathodic is huge across the board in many different applications where they need uh, cathodic protection, whether it's in the oil and gas or whether it's for a bridge or your local water pump, uh, water tower and different things, but SCADA, all your radio communication, chemical injection, then just moving on to different things, lighting, LED lighting and stuff is huge. So many people have really gotten into lighting and for all these different off-grid applications. Off-grid alarm and security has become 
huge now. So many people looking at security and different things. Navade, look at all your buoys and all your stuff out in the water applications where there's all kinds of cellular, anywhere where they can put this off grid and they need a solar module, they need power, they can put in a solar module and, and a, a good battery. Cellular applications, communications, all these different radio ones, mountaintop, border patrol, water pumps. Look at all the different things for water pumps, oil pumps. On grid, look at their cellular, UPS, telecom, cable TV, all the residential stuff. Traffic control is huge now. All the traffic, everybody's looking at getting different opportunities for traffic now. We have many new customers looking at those kind of areas. Yeah, go see Caltrans or go to your transportation division in your area, your state transportation department. They are literally, they'll, they'll buy, a, you know, $150,000 worth of, uh, you know, 85 amp hour, 12 volt batteries for all their uh, backups for their, for their traffic signals. I mean, there's great opportunities out there that if people just open open up their eyes and take their solar blinders off. They can grow their business right now, not retract, but actually grow. Right, Bruce? No, that's exactly right. And again, then one last area that, that covers, or not one last area, but just in the energy storage that's been uh, deemed or termed energy storage, but the UPS smart grid, people that are looking at saving power during peak power time frame and shaving shaving off, uh, going to battery backup during the peak power rate time so they can stay out of that world, you know, and, and there's such a big market that people are just missing out. Like for instance, hotels and their elevators, just go in and talk to people. Elevator business is huge and putting that, the elevators draw a huge amount of current. And if they put those on batteries during the peak time, they can get out of that world. So power shaving, peak shaving, uh, looking at those kinds of frequency stabilization, just becoming independent off the grid now. More and more people and wealthy homeowners are trying to get off the grid if they can. So they're looking at putting in battery, battery bank systems and saturated RE markets. There's lots of opportunities to add that. So anyhow, just wanted to uh, uh, expand about that, that as Josh said. Don't, don't put blinders on it. Just think one, one application only. But find a couple more. Become an expert at it. And, uh, again, just remember us out here. We're here to help you in any of those kind of things that you want to get into. And training, we love to do virtual training as well as we don't mind at all coming to your site or to a customer of yours, one of your customers. And we're happy to assist you with, a, you know, people feel a lot more comfortable sometimes face-to-face -face rather than, or a classroom scenario rather than sitting on virtually. But we're happy to do it either way. We don't charge. Just happy to do it. Just get with the, the, the Solagent guys or their team, and uh, we're happy to uh, uh, connect with you guys and see what we can do. If the business opportunities that Bruce just laid out that are available in energy storage outside of our residential solar business we traditionally go after. If that does not motivate you, you may want to check your pulse, you know, take a, take a mirror up to your, up to your, your face and make sure you're breathing because it really literally, you know, breathing human beings right now that need to pay the bills, uh, keep people employed, grow their business. It's not going to happen by doing the same old, same old. If you want to sit there and whine and moan about how unfair NEM3 is in California, as an example, and just blah, 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 and, you know, uh, and then go find that one energy storage supplier at the show that claims to have a one size fits all and then go out and think that you're helping people. You're going to get a bad reputation. The business is going to go down. You're going to lay people off and you're going to go out of business. But if you take advantage of the myriad of opportunities in energy storage outside of regular solar that Bruce Hayback from MK Battery here on the Beyond Emissions podcast by Solagent just talked about, I mean, he laid out a roadmap for you and your business to start, have your salespeople start targeting those markets you would be surprised you could probably live on one of those other alternative markets alone, let alone just adding on to your solar stuff. I mean, it, it is just amazing. We have yet to touch the, the tip of the iceberg of the economic 
behemoth known as energy storage. And we want you to participate in this clean energy revolution. Do you want to win? If you want to win, join us. Join us. Let's do it together. We're here for you. The resources available uh, from Sologen and partners uh, like Bruce Hayback from MK Battery East Pan. Bruce, you got to come back, man. We've got God. We've got a million things still to talk about. Like I told you, we could be on this show for nine hours. I'm serious. Um, thank you very much, Bruce. Thank you for your leadership in the business, sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, looking forward to having you back again. I'm already planting that seed. You got to come back in about a month or so. Uh, I'll be in touch with you to, to schedule that. And in the meantime, if our listeners would like to find out more, directly contact you and your team to ask any questions whatsoever. Uh, what's the best way for our customers to reach you and, and learn more about MK Battery Direct uh, in addition to utilizing us here at Sologent? But what's the best way for them to reach you if they'd like to chat with you about something, Bruce? Well, they can obviously just reach out to me, but they can just go to our website, and, uh, and, and see an awful lot of the things we've just talked about and all the new products. It's very easy to see www.mkbattery.com. But again, uh, any of our team, um, but again, you can just, uh, uh, reach out to me, Bruce H at mkbattery.com and, uh, I'll respond quickly. I check my emails. <laughs> Constantly, 24-7 just about. Uh, my wife doesn't think I ever sleep. But anyhow, uh, Bruce H. at mkbattery.com. Just reach out to me. Happy to respond to you guys at anything you guys are looking for. Bruce H. at mkbattery.com. Reach out to him. He will be back on the show. But he and his team are here and ready to help you along with Sologent. Any project you have, email me, storage at sologent.net. I'll connect you with him as well for one-on-one -on -one training. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us today. Tell um, Elias and Glousey we said hello. And, and oh, shout out for Bruce Rausch, uh, superstar here at Sologent, uh, is offering your solutions in California for the Decker Duration DD5300. So I anticipate some real growth there because Bruce is a leader in this business, Bruce Rausch. So shout out, brother uh, Bruce Rausch from Sologent. Uh, really leading the way and and we're going to open this up and and get more people involved so they know about your solution too thanks for being on the show today and your partnership bruce thank you so much sir oh, no problem thanks for having me on and i look forward to another call another day awesome hang on the line for our engineers thanks bruce this is the beyond emissions podcast brought to you by sologent your clean energy solution provider we at Sologen are incredibly excited to announce our partnership with Give Power. Well, we wouldn't be here today talking to you about Give Power if it wasn't for our partners, Lone Bell. They've been with Give Power since the beginning. Their contribution has given water and light to countless people across the globe. We are truly inspired by Lone Bell's dedication to the cause. Something Lone Bell said really strikes a chord regarding Give Power that this is something that's more than money. It's what makes making money more worthwhile. In a lot of ways, that's synonymous with what we're doing here at Sologen. Here's how you can help. What we've decided to do is compound Lone Pal's contribution by donating to Give Power on every order paid via our direct pay program through Lone Pal. That's right. Every time your company uses your Lone Pal portal to pay Sologen for material, five people get clean drinking water for a full year. Together, we're stronger. Together, we can choose to be extraordinary by giving to people who live outside our reach. To us, this means a lot more. Sologen's purpose meets Give Power's mission. Join the impact. Sologen, Solar Engine. SolarEngineSolutions.com. Go there to find out more.